Hey guys, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today is Tuesday, August 4th. It has been a week since I had my surgery. Um, things were very difficult um, and there was a big breakdown in communication and just things didn't go as smoothly as I would have liked, um, starting with the car trip up to um, Albany where I was having my surgery they had called and they were like oh well we haven't reviewed your CAT scan results do you have the disc with you and I was like no it was supposed to have been sent over two weeks ago so um, from that point on there was quite a bit of stress and I feel like more stress than honestly necessary um, and I've just been struggling so so much with this surgery honestly it's definitely the hardest surgery that I've ever had to endure so the morning of surgery, I was up, I think, between 3 and 4. I didn't obviously sleep very well, um, just because, you know, it's a different town, different city, it's a lot louder, I'm used to the quiet, the country, um, so I didn't really sleep too well, and then of course nerves. And then once I was at the facility, I was informed that they did not get my COVID-19 test results. So of course that adds another layer of stress and we were waiting for like an hour and a half to two hours for those stupid test results. Um, they had never contacted the facility where I had the test done and they did not um, ask for it to be faxed over. I get that, you know, they when they set up the appointment they were like, oh, well you have to fax the results. I'm assuming they were faxed and they weren't filed right or something. Um, because there was a whole big thing when they were faxing it that morning that like they kept saying it was faxed and then like it was not received. So I don't really know what happened with that, um, but it was really um, frustrating and silly at the end of the day because you know, you're just waiting there and there's not much you can do but wait. So, and that threw the schedule off a little bit. They booked the OR, I was told, for three hours, and they felt that that was plenty, 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 plenty of time, um, and, you know, they weren't going to need that much time, except for they forgot that they're dealing with me, <laughs> um, and, you know, things don't always go according to plan, and you plan the best to your ability, and then you just act, you know, the best that you can in the moment, and hope for the best results. So, um, finally, like, after we got all that, you know, situated, they brought me over to the OR. Um, I remember, like, a little bit of being in the OR, like, you know, like, sliding over onto the operating table, um, and then, like, them, you know, putting a mask on me to give me gas and all of that great stuff. Um, after that, I don't really remember a lot. Like, I have, like, this weird subconscious memory. I don't know, like, if I woke up like partially during the surgery or like my subconscious like I heard stuff and like I remembered it but like I could just hear like my doctor specifically like telling me you know to keep fighting and to hold on and you know to not let go and keep going um stuff of that nature so I didn't know right away but um I was pretty unstable throughout the surgery which they were kind of expecting me to be a little bit more stable than I was honestly my blood pressure would crash and then it would spike to really dangerously high, you know, where like I'm really unsteady, which I, or unstable is really the word, unstable. Um, and I had that happen with my colonoscopy, no, my upper endoscopy recently um, when I was admitted back in May. So like the same things were happening. They would give me medication like to raise my blood pressure and then it would go through the roof. Then they would give me medicine to lower my blood pressure and it would crash to the point that they couldn't do anything. So that was a whole thing, the entire surgery I heard. Um, and then in addition to that, like my heart rate was swinging, it would go super, super low, and then I would be like ridiculously tachycardic. So um, my body was not playing nice, the FIO was not playing nice throughout the entire surgery. It took a little over four hours, I think I was told. Um, I did have adhesions which had to be removed and it was just a really, really hard surgery, I'm not going to lie. Um, my family didn't know really what was going on, they had no idea that I was crashing and all this other stuff until hours later 
they actually didn't think that I was going to pull through because no doctor had come to tell them anything and it had been way over the allotted time that they were given and they were promised that they were going to be contacted. So, you know, as time kept going on and nobody's hearing anything, nobody knew anything, you know, you assume the worst, unfortunately. And I was very, very blessed, very lucky to be sitting here, honestly, I feel like, um, because it was really touch and go for a little while and I could tell that it was really hard on my family and you know that's the hardest thing for me is feeling like a burden even though you know your loved ones tell you you're not you still feel that way um, and just to know how much stress that they went through during those four hours and it's just, it was a lot. Um, I really was going to pick up the camera um, right after surgery, honestly, even though I felt like, oh my gosh, I've never felt so much pain, guys, in my life. I feel like when I woke up, I just remember I was screaming and crying, um, and I was just trying to explain to people how much pain that I was in. I felt like I was like put through like a chopper, like a tree chopper, and like, you know, that I'm just like shredded up pieces basically, and then like hit by a bus is like I guess how I would describe it. Even with all that said, like I was going to, like I said, pick up the camera until I came to the realization that I had a roommate, um, and there were several things wrong obviously with that, unfortunately. Um, I don't have anything against obviously other people at all um, except for she could have been acutely sick she was getting over something acute um, and that was not making me comfortable she also was running fevers and stuff of that nature so stuff like that I'm not supposed to be around because y'all know I'm severely immunocompromised my doctor flipped today when he heard that he's so mad because we all had discussed me being in a private room and obviously I feel like if I was in a private room I probably would have vlogged um, it probably would have been an ugly vlog, <laughs> um, to be honest with you, but, um, because it was just a lot of tears, a lot of frustration, guys. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I'm gonna just say it so many times, I'm sure. If you don't have to go to a hospital during the COVID-19 pandemic, don't. It's, it's a nightmare. It seriously is. Um, I had one tech, you know, in the beginning that would help me like to the bathroom and all that good stuff and you know just to you need a lot of help um, moving my incisions are debatable if it's laparoscope or not um, my doctor says this is an open surgery hands down um, the surgeon said laparoscope so um, he's going based off of how many incisions and how big they are um, I'm a little bit above like the typical laparoscopy threshold so he says it was an open surgery. But regardless, after surgery, you do need a lot of help, um, whether you want it or not, you need it. Um, and after the one nice tech left, I was trying to sit up to go, you know, this way I could stand up to go to the bathroom. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, it's embarrassing. You can't, I could not like, prop myself up enough. I didn't realize how rough shape I was in, honestly. So I was like, okay, this is not really making sense, but like, I can't sit up properly. So I looked at the tech and I was like, I can't do this. I need help. Could you give me a hand? And they looked at me and she goes, no, you can do it. And I just sat there and I just cried, like, cause there's nothing else you can do. Um, I get that some of it, I'm assuming, is COVID because they don't want to get too close, they don't want to touch people, but at the same time, it's really hard, like, after surgery and you're like, oh shoot, I can't do this, I need, like, physical assistance, and people are just there and they're like, well, you know, I'll be positive about this and try to cheer you on, but that's about it. Um, so there's a lot of different little things, which then brings me to the point is I did, we opted for me to come home early. Um, because I felt like I had more physical assistance at home. I was not getting adequate pain management. So if I'm not getting adequate pain management and I don't feel like I'm getting physical assistance in the hospital when I need it or assistance in general in the hospital, 
Um, and there was no other reason for me to stay, like even with um, IV steroids, honestly, I could do that myself. Um, I've done it before, I've injected before, I've, you know, pushed it through before. I know how to do it all. So, um, yeah, there was definitely, it came to the point that I told my doctors, like, I'm done. I want to go home. I go, because at least if I'm home and I need help, somebody will help me. Um, it's not easy to ask for help constantly, because I feel like I can't do anything, guys. Like, I seriously, it's awful. Um, there's been a lot more pain than I anticipated, and I felt like I set myself up for a lot of pain, but it definitely exceeded. So, um, there will be clips, um, I'm thinking probably before this clip, but I'm going to show you guys again anyways. These are my wrist, and this actually is healed quite a bit. So that's the one wrist, and this is the other one. Like I said, this is, guys, healed so much. I did not get, like, good shots of the befores at all. So, um, I woke up with three peripheral IVs, my port hooked up, um, and being told that two other, um, like, ICU IVs were placed in me and already removed. And then I was able to clearly see, like, needle markings for about four other IVs. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Like, I know that there was several residents there. I don't know if this was, like, a resident issue that somebody did not know what they were doing or if it was truly my veins not cooperating. I really, we were not given, I don't believe, as much information as I should have been given. Or, and you guys know I love to know everything. I love to be in the know. It wasn't until my surgeon was confronted on certain things did, was she like, oh yeah. And I don't like operating that way. I like the facts up front. Like even with the adhesions, we were not told, oh, that she had adhesions. They were cleaned out. Nothing like that. It wasn't until my mom was like, you know what, did you see any adhesions? And then she was like, oh yeah, there was quite a few and this is the spot that's good information this way I could pass that along obviously to my other doctors so it was definitely an experience that is for sure um, one that I'm happy to not have to relive anytime soon um, because it was like definitely a nightmare at points in time and it was just really really overwhelming the whole experience even like there was a problem with the breathing tube and nobody told me that so like as all the anesthetics are wearing off i'm feeling my mouth and i was like i know i'm late for ramicade but man these sores like i've never had sores like this before and so like they were so painful too and not like like a normal like pain it was like over the top and I was like I know I just had surgery but still so I finally said something like to somebody and they're like oh there was a problem with the breathing tube they placed it the wrong way and they ended up like cutting up your mouth and stuff I was like well that would have been good information because I'm like trying to eat because everybody's trying to force me to and then I'm like this is not making any sense to me so it's just a lot of those little things that I think really made it a lot more stressful than it needed to be. I've had like the worst lower back pain from this all and I didn't anticipate that. Obviously I anticipated the incision pain. I did not anticipate it not reacting very well to pain meds. I, when I was given pain meds, even in the IV in the hospital, we weren't moving on the pain scale very much. If I was moving, you're like half a number to a number, if that. Most times, though, it was just keeping me where I was. So if I was at a 10, I was just staying at that 10 and maybe getting to drift off to sleep. So it was just a lot. And, like, in the beginning, too, like, my nervous system was not turning on properly, so I was not, like, able to go to the bathroom and all that stuff. So that was another adventure. I don't do well getting catheterized. I know other people can do it themselves. That is not my skill. That is not something I'm ever, you know, interested in learning at this point because of so many reasons. But, um, yeah, that was a whole adventure. They needed to give me medication in order to do that, which it is what it is right after surgery. Like, it was just a really big mess. 
so I've been home and oh yeah and then the other thing was right when I had woken up like in my room this was I guess not right when I woke up but after I guess I was sleeping while my family had left um, and my surgeon had come in and she wanted to know why I wasn't walking around in the hallway and I was like seriously I just had surgery like seriously give me a little bit of time I was like we're lucky I'm making it to the bathroom at this point like I was walking literally to the bathroom I didn't ask they're like, we could give you a bedpan or a commode. I was like, no, I'm going to walk to the bathroom. I know that's what I need to do. But then she was like, you're not doing laps in the hallway. We like for people to be up to four laps at this point. I was like, not happening, honey. Just not happening. I wish. But I know that my body recovers slowly. I do have a history of after laparoscopies passing out. Thankfully, I did not pass out this time, but I was very, very careful and very vocal about, like, feeling like I was going to fall. The other thing was, is not all the employees were, like, strict mask wearers, and you know what, you do what you want, but um, when you work in a medical facility and you're dealing with immune-compromised patients, I feel you need to wear that mask. I'm sorry because you're putting me at a risk because I did not have one on. Because for us, it's not like mandated because, you know, after surgery, breathing issues, all, all the stuff, you don't, it's not required for the patient, but the techs and nurses should. So when people were not wearing them, that was making me uncomfortable too. Towards the end of my stay, um, I was transferred into a different room by myself, which I feel like I should have been from the beginning. Because like I said, it's just a really big risk for my severely compromised immune system. So that went on a lot longer than I had anticipated, obviously. Um, the other thing is, is we do need for me to be worked up for quite a few other diseases. A lot of gene mutations I need to be worked up for. I was given, um, statistically speaking, a 95 to 98% chance of having thyroid cancer. Um, they did mention other cancers that need to be looked into. Um, and like I said, all the gene mutations, so we're not gonna like rush into it. My endocrinologist just kind of wants me to rest and not stress because you know, I only have one adrenal right now. We're trying to not mess with the steroid dose too much and just get my body through this crisis before you know we start pushing and start running more tests and doing all the stuff, but I have follow-ups. We're doing the best I possibly can every day. It is a lot and it's this is hands down the hardest surgery I've ever gone through. I'm sure there's plenty that <laughs> I left out but I figure this is a good start. Alright thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.